Today, the Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act, but in this version, there's an amendment that clarifies protections for religious liberties. Let's talk about it with the Washington Times political reporter, Ramsey Touchberry, who's live with us here on Fox 5. Ramsey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. When we saw the vote come down today, uh, there were, I believe, we were looking at 61 uh, votes in favor of it. There was a lot of concern, though, when it comes to what many Republicans called religious liberties. There were amendments offered. What changes did we see here today? Yeah, so there were several amendments offered by Republicans. Um, none of them actually passed because they needed uh, either a majority or, or a supermajority, two thirds, so, so 60 votes. Um, but essentially what they wanted was to strengthen some religious liberty exemptions in the law. There were concerns from uh, most Republicans that um, should uh, this bill become law, which it looks like it's going to, uh, that individuals or businesses could perhaps fall victim to either litigation or um, targeting by government agencies for not supporting same-sex marriage. And so you saw uh, Republican senators like Mike Lee, Marco Rubio, and James Langford offer up uh, three separate amendments to essentially strengthen these protections. They ultimately didn't pass, but, uh, you know, writers of this legislation argue that there were already uh, some protections at least afforded in this legislation. Uh, this is what took months of wrangling between uh, Democrats and Republicans. They ultimately uh, delivered the bill that passed today that does include a carve out uh, that says, you know, nonprofit religious institutions, essentially churches, uh, will not be forced to provide uh, same sex marriage services. Yeah, this isn't necessarily, I think a lot of people thought this characterized, and we should point out it is same sex marriage, but also interracial marriage technically falls under this umbrella here, which uh, is something that, that is an important part of the, the component here. But uh, when you look at the, the, the vote and, and the legislation that was passed today, it is not necessarily this blanket law that, that puts same-sex marriage and interracial marriage as the law of the land. It more or less codifies it on the federal level, but sort of still gives states the opportunity here if they want to put restrictions on it. It's just a matter of how the federal government would recognize some of these unions. Yeah, and viewers might be wondering, you know, don't we already have those protections in place thanks to the Supreme Court uh, and a ruling in 2015? The answer is yes, but this legislation, think of it essentially as a safety net. Uh, proponents of this bill argue that uh, there is a chance that the Supreme Court could revisit uh, the case that, that gives these same-sex marriage protections at the federal level, such as the court did with Roe v. Wade and abortion protections. And so um, proponents of this, especially Democrats, feared uh, that that could be the case in the coming years. So they crafted this legislation. They eventually got uh, a dozen Senate Republicans on board with them, which they needed. Uh, and so now it, it looks like it's got a clear path to become law. Uh, it'll head to the, the Democratic-led House. It'll have no problem passing there. Uh, and then Biden will sign it into law. So clearly they have to get this done, though, on the House side very soon before the Republican majority takes over. Yeah, they have a the next busy few weeks during their lame duck session. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer told a colleague of mine today that uh, Democrats are looking to pass it in the House as early as uh, next Tuesday, so mm -hmm. a week from today. After that, the president would be expected to swiftly sign it into law. Ramsey Touchberry from The Washington Times, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me.